Let's check in on the tail of the tape, which is sponsored by Corona. For the first fight, this one in terms of height and reach, very liberal to uh, separate Plants and Medina. Four years apart in age when it comes out to experience. There is a gulf between them. Medina, a veteran with 30 more fights to his name than his opponent tonight. Plant, young, fresh, unbeaten, and about to face his toughest opponent yet. Let's get you over to Ray Flores for tonight's introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Don Haskins Center here in El Paso, Texas. Live on Fox, this is Premier Boxing Champions. The action begins with 12 rounds in the Super Middleweight Division. Your referee in charge when the bell sounds is Mark Colloy. Introducing first fighting up of the red corner. He comes in wearing the black with the orange trim. His professional record stands at 38 wins, 32 of those coming by way of knockout against eight losses. Hailing desde San Luis Potosi, Mexico. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros presentando the former title challenger, Rogelio Porky Medina. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the blue with the white trim. As a professional, he's undefeated. 16 wins, 10 of those coming by way of a knockout. Fighting and representing Nashville, Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the fast rising Caleb Sweetham. Wants you to excel to your peak. So that's a lot of pressure. You just gotta be ready. Everybody's gunning for you. You're the target. The other wild card, the crowd, the environment. Because not only is Caleb Plant taking a step up, guys, this is a road game for him. It is. He's in hostile territory, as evident by the crowd's response on his introduction. Right now, he's establishing a pretty good jab. Uh, in the beginning of the round, which is uh, what he should do. Fill out Porky Medina, see what he wants to do, and then pick it up from there. What do you want to see in the opening round from a young fighter in a step-up fight? What's the first thing you're looking for? Just what he's doing, establishing that jab, going to work, and putting your presence. Letting them know your ring generalship in there, that you're the guy in there. On Medina's side, uh, being the veteran that he is, he's trying to force Caleb to punch so he can feel his power, feel what he's bringing uh, to the fight tonight. And then he'll begin his work off of what he feels that uh, once he feels Plant can't hurt him, uh, he'll step it up. But Plant is establishing a good jab, and he's taking his time to find out what Medina intends to do. This is a title eliminator for Caleb Plant. Porky Medina, insert your own gag here, missed weight yesterday, so it is not on the line for him. But if Caleb Plant wins this fight, he moves up to number two at 168 in the IBM. And then the later rounds, when he's got more confident, he's been more aggressive and thrown more. Yes, and that, that's where he wants to be. Caleb, it's that distance. Boxes on the outside, poking and poking that jab, sticking to your fundamentals. You know, stay on your game plan. That, that's what he got to do. These first two rounds are always dangerous for a fighter, especially having a guy like Porky Medina in front of you. They come and they, they throw big bombs. So, you know, he's playing it safe right now and just filling them out. The right goes. So Medina's putting uh, pressure on uh, Caleb with his presence. He's putting presence pressure on him right now. He's making him move where he wants to. He's causing him to do a lot of unnecessary movement at this point. So both men have strategies. 
A story of the fight, the pressure Medina can put on Plant and the pressure that Plant Stop. is putting on himself. If there were nerves for Caleb Plant in round one, Virgil, we didn't really see him. No, he didn't. He, uh, again, it's important that a young prospect establish his jab, try to set the tone, but at the same time, he has to be alert. One thing that I would uh, caution him about is being along the ropes with his lead hand down, because I know Medina sees that. So he has to be really, really uh, con uh, con uh, conscious of that. Robert, when you were rising, when you were undefeated, is there an element of you don't know what you don't know? No, I mean you gotta you gotta be able to get in there and adapt to everything and feel the guy out, be sharp, see what he got. And that's that's what both guys are doing. You see Medina, he's starting to close the gap little by little, slow and steady. And Caleb Plan is just you know, keeping it out. Staying calm. about a division in this crowd tonight, in this fight. Many things that Caleb Plant has not really had to deal with. Yes, you talk about the A side. To the crowd, the A side is Medina. Yep. You know, he has the crowd backing him, which is a good thing on his part. So we got to see how Caleb Plant's going to react down the line when he starts getting hot. It would be a good time now for Caleb to get his respect with a good shot and discourage Medina from coming forward. You can see Medina's here for a 12-round fight, and you can see his strategy is to keep constant pressure on Caleb. Even though he's not throwing much, he's still causing Caleb to react, in my opinion, unnecessarily uh, getting away from him. He's doing a whole lot and uh, losing a lot of energy getting away from Medina right now. Many of you know the story of Caleb Plant. Some of you may not. Unspeakable tragedy. The worst thing that can happen to anybody on this planet and any parent is to lose a child. You see on the right side of his trunks, it says, rest in peace, Aaliyah. His daughter, who he lost three years ago at 19 months, who was never healthy, immune deficiency, and immune disorder, and it was a torturous ordeal for Caleb Plant. You want to talk about guys growing up in a hurry. He had no choice. And that's another reason he resents this ASAP thing. He said, I, show me someone who's been through what I've Pill to swallow, and, and it's one of those things where, like I said, mental that mental fortitude is what gets you through everything. Left jab is working now for Caleb Plant. A lot more confident here as we close out round two. He takes a Leo with him every day, every situation. It's certainly the biggest fight of his life tonight. Yes, you can see how much he wore on his sleeve yesterday. The distance, in his first 13 fights, obviously all wins. Caleb Plant only had to go 43 rounds. His last three guys all went the distance. And Robert, yesterday, his camp was talking to us about, well, the guys he was fighting in the last three, they kind of went into survival mode. They were kind of running. They they fought in a way to, that Caleb was not going to look good. And you and I kind of looked at each other like, okay, that's, that's one theory, but we didn't quite buy it. Yeah, a lot of guys go into survival mode when you hit them. It's, it's tough to get him out of there. But as you get more experience and more experience, when a guy's in survival mode, you learn how to take a guy out because they don't want to be in there. So you, you learn how to get a guy out of there, and when he's finished and done, and it, it, it comes with experience on how to recognize that. So. One thing we have to take under consideration is Medina is coming off of that loss, so we don't know where his head is, or we don't know what he's anticipating coming back. He might have questions for himself. Uh, can I still take a punch? Am I vulnerable at this time to a good punch? And you know, I think the reason it's a great point for us is because we looked at that fight and said, wow, 
He took shots in that fight with Benavides that would have knocked out a rhinoceros, and he kept coming forward, but you don't think about the flip side was it was a vicious knockout, and he was on the wrong end. Of course he was, and then we, we have to wonder, did he have enough time to recover? Did he give himself enough time to recover? Should he have taken a fight in between? Right now he's falling short on what he's doing. Plant's got him bleeding now, and he's just picking him apart right now. This is the plant we're used to seeing now. Shoulders are dropping a little bit, gaining in confidence. The one thing Medina did is he actually went to a training camp. And he was playing with Benavides for this fight. So he, he prepared himself very well for this fight. So it's time to see what he got. And he is taking a beating right now with Plant working on that job. Right now he's waiting. He's constantly waiting. He has Plant where he needs it, but he is not initiating it. Uh, his offense, he's just sort of following the plan around the ring and he's on the receiving end right now. It's almost like he's waiting to get in a big punch before he starts going to work. He's right there, but it seems like he doesn't want to take that last half step to pick up his game and pick up uh, his tempo. Virgil, talk to me about Caleb Plant holding his lead hand so low. Well, that's his style right now. He's comfortable with that. At some point, uh, he'll come out of it because there are people up there who can, uh, there are fighters up there, I'm sorry, who could uh, capitalize on that. So you always want to have the fundamentals to fall back on having your hands in place. But he's comfortable with Medina because he's faster than Medina. So he's comfortable at range. Medina's letting him box at his range. So he can pretty much do what he wants to with the lead hand right now. It's just a pick em party right now. He's just picking him apart. Medina's waiting too long. He's not initiating. He's not going to beat him by just standing there. And he's anticipating the counterpunch coming back. Plant mixes in the combination. You've seen the damage. The jab has already done. And the plant getting stronger, getting more confident as the rounds go on. Picking Porky Medina apart. I could call him on the chin instead of the eye. I couldn't tell. Uh, what do you need to see from Medina now that the first three rounds have gone the way that Caleb Plant wanted him to go? He needs to start. He needs to start. Applying his punch. Caleb's. He's expending a lot of energy moving around, dancing around. And what he needs to do is keep cutting the ring, putting up pressure, the pass pressure behind the jab. at the moment he's making the gestures that he's making but when he's in range to punch he's not punching and, pump, and plan is uh, punching him so it's no sense in him complaining and being demonstrating demonstrating that uh, he's frustrated because it's up to him to apply the pressure and put plan into a fight but at this point he actually looks gunshot Robin how do you see it through three I see uh three rounds the way everybody else sees it yes sir He's doing a great job boxing him on the outside. Picking the right spots to land his shots. He's doing a good job so far. Now, as we said, Medina missed weights yesterday. What is the first thing that comes into your mind when a fighter misses weight? He was only one pound over with two hours to make it and then could post. Is that recovery for the next day? You know, throughout the later rounds, that's where it starts to it starts to jam you up because the nutrition wasn't right. You couldn't make the weight, you knew you cut a lot. Plant is doing what he wants to do right now. Even though he's using a lot of energy, it's relaxed energy. It's not tight energy because uh, Medina's allowing him to walk where he wants to walk. He's allowing him to prance where he wants to prance. He's allowing him to fight where he wants to fight. So it's up to Medina to turn the tide. Medina, the distance with James again. Medina with Gilberto Ramirez. We talked about the Benavides. Jonathan Gonzalez was on the team. Vicious knockout. The one thing that I like Plants doing is every time he fires his jab or a combination, he goes down with the body, which is good. It's going to pay toll towards the end, towards the end of the round. Gianni Alonso was undefeated when Medina knocked it out. Medina 
is applying a little more effective pressure now. And uh, Planters seems to be willing to stand there and, and, and take it to try to get his counter in. So we'll see how that unfolds. What Medina has to do is just step in and punch. He cannot look for a clean punch. He has to punch. You see the last three have gone the distance. And there are people who, if there are criticisms of Caleb Plant, it is the style that he does not get hit. Robert, when I gave you his quote yesterday, he has a take, Caleb Plant's take, on the famous Mike Tyson quote. Everybody's got a plan until they get hit. Caleb Plant actually said, everyone's got a plan until they miss their first 40 punches. And your eyes lit up with that, and you said to me, it's true. It's true. It's true. When I fought Mayweather, it was tough to hit him. Game plan went out the window, and it was just trying to land a punch. It's very frustrating. But Dana is frustrated at this point. Again, if he would just take the initiative to punch like there, uh, he could he could make things start happening for himself. He has to understand that he's going to have to go get Plant. That's that's without a doubt. He has to understand that and accept that. So he just needs to apply himself, make it as simple as possible, and let both his hands go. But right now, he appears frustrated. See. He changed his whole hand position and he took a good right hand <laughs> just for that little move. But he is slightly close to the distance. He is slightly making contact. He, he also has to understand that he's going to get hit coming in. He has to accept that if he wants to win this fight. He's trying to close the gap. He's taking shots on his way in. I feel he needs to get a little more head movement and a little faster pressure and hit him where he can. You're right, Rose. And the other thing is, when he gets in the fire zone, he just stops and poses. But if he can continue to make contact like that, it will invigorate him, trust me. And he'll start picking it up. That's true to his nature. He gets one good punch through. Uh, it, it really did rain. He started to close the distance. That's what he has to do. Follow the jab back and step to him when he does. Right, he's taking a shot every time he takes that chance. Is Caleb Plant getting too comfortable? Well, his corner just gave him some great instructions by telling him, don't get too comfortable like a day of the day. He, they're already seeing that he's with, uh, Medina's willing to take the punches to get, him, to get through to him now. They also know Medina is banking on him getting tired by the constant movement and getting away in the constant pressure he's putting on. That's what, he's, that's what Medina has to do to win this fight. The issue over the years with Medina has been head movement or lack thereof. And when he jabs, he needs to step with his jab, but he is applying a lot of pressure now. So this is a 12-round fight. A lot happens on the other side of six. Yes, he's looking good. His energy level is great too. He's still good on his feet. Still got that hand speed. He's looking a good jab. Great. 
What I would like to see him do is stay in the middle of the ring. Just turn. Keep turning. Keep turning. Let's go. Don't let him get you up on the ropes because that's where Medina wants to happen. And that's where Medina needs to get him. That's great advice that he should be given in the corner. But because when you move like that, you have a tendency to go to the ropes and move along the ropes. And if he's doing it in sparring, and if he's doing it most of his career, that's what he's going to do. It's, you know, this Virgil, all it takes is a nice side step. And back on that jab. And you, you don't have to waste so much on your exactly. But Dana landed a nice little body shot on the knee. How significant it is at this point, I don't know, but it was a nice shot. Uh, Flint didn't see the shot. He tried to get the same spot. He is starting to land shots. This is where we've seen great, great opponents start to fade. It's not likely Forky Medina is going to fade. No, Forky will not fade. He's that typical tough Mexican where they pick it up towards the end. They you have that warrior blood in them yeah. where they want to come out and just get you towards the end. One gear. Yeah. Now, something very interesting has happened in that exchange. Medina punched with it and finished the combination out. He wasn't doing that earlier. Caleb's got his mouth open a little bit. I don't know if that means anything. But he started to dance the same dance with his footwork. And goes your right. He's going to have to hurt Medina now to keep him off of it. Yeah, he got to keep picking at that body as Medina. Medina had a lot of trouble making that weight, and he didn't even make the weight. So, you know, he's drained out. You got to bang that body. Keep picking at it. Keep picking at it. Just like that. Which you are all aware by now. He got to brace on the left knee of Medina. So you watching his, has that affected his movement? He's not. He doesn't move a ton anyway. Uh, he keeps itching forward. Trying to close that gap. That's not the shot by Medina. Medina's best round of the fight. Medina's been some of the best. In MMA, Cowboy Cerrone has been one of the best. Still has a chance to become the UFC's all-time winningest fighter. Takes on Yancey Medeiros, who won one of the fights of the year last year in MMA. UFC Fight Night on a special night tomorrow at 6 Eastern on FS1 and stream it live on Fox Sports. The one thing you got here is Mexico cheering for Medina here in El Paso. So that right there gives you that urge to win in front of your home fans here so close to the border. Mexico, they're here to cheer him on. Now you, you need Fox, everybody viewing here in the U.S. to cheer on That's Jake right. the Plant. Now I like the way Medina came out that round. Did you see him gallop out of that corner? That lets me know he feels like he found something. He's just accepted the fact, okay, you're going to hit me, but I'm, I'm punching back. And something's going to get through. He's done the law of averages, if nothing else, one of these is going to get through. Counter move, counter move. And we have to remember, Medina is a veteran of 12 round fights. He knows how 12 round fights go. He knows that there are sticking points in 12 round fights. Nice body shot. You hit it right on, Virgil. Every time he gets in there, he punches with Caleb. Have you seen that hook right there? He knows if he punches with him, he can land. Yes. Now, what he needs to do when he's not so close to the ropes, he needs to step in with the punch. See, he's reaching first before he needs to step in with his feet with the punch and not reach out with the punch. He stepped in right there, so he gets two punches out. And I would be concerned in Caleb's corner now that he's, he's getting two punches at a time off now. If he starts getting three off, it's, it could be a problem. Yeah, Pine needs to get back onto that jab, that double, triple jab. Throw some feints out there. I heard his corner say, throw some feints out there to freeze him up. So that's what he needs to do. The one thing I like to see what he's doing is he's maintaining his focus. He's keeping that focus. He's not, he's not going to put him under the pressure. His style draws the ire of the crowd. Get up! 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 Get up!
been pressured like this, Break. particularly Break. in later rounds, but he has handled it well to this point. See right there, he needs to be back on that jab. He needs those trades. He can poke him to keep his distance. And don't just let Medina walk right in. He called Porky Medina the very definition of a man. The way he fights, and you can see why. Medina has not only continued to come forward, he's been more aggressive here. Much more aggressive. And actually, Caleb is only doing one punch at a time uh, this round. Either one jab or one right hand. And he's trying to hit and get away at the same time, so Medina is bothering him with the pressure. Plant built up that big early lead, but Corky Medina keeps on coming. Plant is landing, Medina still coming forward, just what we thought we'd get here in El Paso. I feel Caleb Plant still picking him apart, moving, doing enough to win the round. Your score card, two seven. I got seven rounds to none for Caleb Plant. I was told there would be no math, but that didn't quite happen. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I gave one round to, I gave one round to uh, Medina. You just threw a fake. Yeah. <laughs> What's interesting about Medina, this knee brace, if you watch him come forward, he stiffens the lead leg as he takes the step. It's not like it's fluid enough for him. Yeah, he'll plant right there on that lead leg like he's really, really conscious of it. Uh, we don't know if he has an injury or we don't know if it's what, what's going on with him, but it does seem to be impeded in his first step to the target. Which means what? What's the effect of that? It means that he's going to be a few tenths of a second slow. So it, it, could, it could hamper his ability to punch through the target. He needs to come behind the left hand and not throw the right hand so far out. I've seen a lot more little feints from Caleb Plant. Firing that jab. So Caleb is doing what he needs to do to win the fight. The 12 rounds. If you don't let me pick you apart, that's what I'm going to do. A win is a win. I saw the punch stats earlier. Medina is one of the busiest fighters at 168. Here, throwing 90 punches around. He threw 95 around against the Gale. 115 in the Benavides fight. And obviously, you can do the math there. The number's way, way down. They have to do it. 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 You make a connection between seeing the knee brace and wondering what went on in the final days leading up to trying to make the weight. Exactly. Man, I've been able to run, jump rope, anything like that. So, as, as Virgil said, you see, he stiffens up that leg when he gets in. That's because it's probably giving him some kind of trouble. He seems to have his balance off a little bit. It's like he's facing. Another thing I noticed is that he's not sweating. So, uh, again, the weight issue could be a problem. Tell people, that's not to take away from Kay, what Caleb Plant is doing. Tell people why that's an issue. Why the sweat thing is an issue? Well, you want to know he's hydrated if he's sweating. And right now his back is bone dry, so you don't know how hydrated he is or what they gave him to rehydrate. You saw that move right there. He almost stumbled with his hand. That went back. I'd, I'd be very interested in seeing that. Yeah, Plant kind of got up a little bit awkwardly after that little after the bell exchange. It looked like, yeah, he walked a little stiff to the corner. Yes. He bumped him in just a, a little bit, right? Maybe five or six seconds before the bell rung.
seems like he was okay. Kind of rolled with it. It wasn't it didn't look like it was too hard to fall. Never playing so. Talks so much about his dad, Richie. Still his co-trainer. Raised him without a lot of money. He couldn't go to those all the fancy tournaments. And do a lot of that work in Tennessee. He didn't even put his knee, knee on the ground that time when he took that step back. He was, he was very ginger on it. If you watch him step back, he's barely touching the ground with his knee and foot. Yeah, he's favoring it a lot when he bounces. He puts all the weight on the back foot when he bounces. And this is why he's throwing so many right hand leads. That explains it. No fighter with the heart of Medina, an opportunity like this. It's not a fight that's going to back up, though. Oh, no, especially when he's got the answer. He's got that warrior blood. And the crowd has spilled some of that early. Yes, he did. He's looking at great jab. Which needs to get back on. I mean, Caleb's corner is really cautioning him to be uh, very alert. He's not going to take the foolish chances. 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 Until that thing reads triple zeros in the last one. Exactly. And that was a good move by Medina. He showed him the right hand. He came with the hook. The plant was just a half step ahead of him. And he made it fell short. That's those, last, those last four rounds, once he hit that ninth, tenth, and twelfth round, I think Medina's going to really try to turn it on. Vamos! Aí! Not so much, it's more of a focus for the Reading everything he's doing. And he's bringing some showmanship. He wants to let Medina know everything he does is not phasing me, it's not bothering me. So his body language is you know, talking a little bit like there's it's nothing you can do about this. Caleb Plex says there is no plan B in his life. Boxing is it. And he is a young guy who just is more comfortable with his skin inside that ring. Yes, this is all he has, he says. So he's going out there to get it. Don't forget, Brandon Wales' dear friend, Victor Ortiz, coming up later on in the main event. It's Devin Alexander. A lot of people are critical of Caleb Evans with his approach to boxing. Uh, being a young man in boxing, uh, if you can win fights, and come out of there unscathed. No, the fans don't like it too much. You're going to be an enemy with the fans, but you're going to have a long career. And as he matures off of that style, he'll learn how to get power shots in on guys at the right time. You'll see him get more and more aggressive as his career goes on. But right now, he has an escape mechanism. If he ever gets hurt, it's going to be hard to put him away if he has his uh, senses about him when he gets hurt because he knows his movement. He knows how to keep you off balance. So it's a good weapon to have. I know the crowd doesn't like it. Virgil, but you, you did a fight of his last year, and you said he's got a little bit of Floyd in some of his senses. Well, I, I don't remember saying it, but if I did Trust say it, I don't think that it would be a bad analogy. <laughs> you know? Um, look at me sounding like a veteran of broadcast. <laughs> but, um, no, You've been doing does. it so long, you don't even remember yes. the stuff you're saying, all the knowledge you dropped. But, um, it's a wise, wise style to embrace if you have it because you're going to last longer in this sport. And he'll he'll pick up the power department. He'll pick up the aggression as he gets more and more seasoned with the top guys. Did we locate in Las Vegas years ago? Vamos. 
proud that Christina cannot step in with this jab. And I think it has something to do with his knee leg. He's walking in, walking in, almost stumbling. It's making it hard for him to cut off the ring also. And with Caleb moving like he is, he's, he's got a tough job. But he's fighting. He just missed a big left hook. It could have been a game changer. Wait! He's getting close. He's getting very close. He's just missed a couple. That was a dangerous move, Kayla, did along the ropes to throw an uppercut up on his back against the rope. Very dangerous move. That's how he's got to play with it. Especially with the hands down. Yes. He's doing a great job, though, having that right hand shot. Yes, he is. He's in his shots, moving, doing what he has to do. He said to win the fight. Yep. Second fight. Yes, he got his Paso crowd here. 
turn it on. fight. One man knows how it turned out. It's the great Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge at ringside, Robert Paolino has the contest 120 to 108. Jesse Reyes 119 to 109. Al Bennett has the contest 117 to 111. For your winner by unanimous decision, and still undefeated, Caleb Sweethands Plants. That could not have gone much better. Well deserved win for Caleb Plant. Showcase tonight. I think he's ready for that title shot. He becomes the number two contender now in this world title eliminator. Passes the test and passes it. Will be Caleb Plant is 17 and 0.